Hello, and welcome to today's Data Byte, where we're going to talk about creating data visualizations in Google Sheets, this program that so many of us are using right now with our students. So we'll think about how do we make some of the most common graph types in Google Sheets? How do we adjust the Google Sheets default? And then a few other things to think about as we're graphing. So the graphing part, obviously, or maybe not so obviously, but I think of it that really falls into the organized and the visualized side of data literacy. So I encourage you to stop the video, pause for a second. You, you came here to watch this, so just take a second to reflect and think about how do your students know what graph to make when they're in Google Sheets, like when they're actively creating their own graph, right? That's what we're doing in Google Sheets. How do they know which type of graph to make? And how do they know how to make that graph? So pause the video, reflect for a few seconds, and then come back and start it up again. So the visualized data falls into the explore data, explore data realm. It's got a variety of different things that go with it. And we're really focused on this creating data visualizations piece. So there's some overall tasks that our students are practicing, skills that they're practicing in this create data visualization overall, as well as some that are pretty specific to what types of graphs and what types of maps. And here I'm using graphs to mean like charts, plots, all of those different things, non-geospatial data versus maps or our, geo, our geospatial data mapped onto a geospatial coordinate system. So there's different skills for each of those. You can read more about these, check out the building blocks for data literacy, but I wanna dive in and think about for these common graph types, how do we do this in Google Sheets? So first off, there's some options in Google Sheets. They have built in into the backend code some algorithms to try to help you out. So when you make a bar, or sorry, when you make a graph, when you highlight some of your data and you go to Google Sheets and you say insert chart, something like this will pop up where it will give you, if you click on the chart type, it will default a specific chart. It is guessing, as in there is backend code to state based on what the data are in terms of how they are organized, not in terms of what they're actually measuring, but how it's organized. There are algorithms that Google Sheets is using to make its best guess as to what might be a good graph type, but it knows it doesn't know your data. So the first thing that you'll see if you actually click on the chart type that is default selected in Google Sheets is a set of suggestions. Usually there are about four that pop up. Again, this is based on how the data are organized and algorithms that it has on the back end. That, always, that isn't always a good match for what we're trying to do with our data. And so then, of course, you can keep scrolling down and then you start getting the long list of different options of graph types. And they each have these, you know, cute little icons, schematic icons of what the different graph types look like. So one way that you could go about deciding what graph type and a way our students often use is either they just go with the default and they don't think about it or they go with what pops up in the suggestion, or they sort of scroll through this long list and kind of look through it and think of like, uh, what looks most interesting, what looks most complicated, therefore my teacher might want that from me, um, things like that. There are lots of different graph types that we use. These are the co most common ones that we visualize, and I'm going to talk through how we make some of these within Google Sheets. If you want to dive deeper into why we should be teaching our students how to pick a graph type based on the data we have and the question that we have, I encourage you to join the second session of the data literacy series where we really dive into creating and iterating data visualizations. But let's go back to Google Sheets. So a bar chart, we're going to talk through 11 of these common common graph types. And what I've got for you on each of these is an example of that graph from Google Sheets that I have created. Um, it is not a great graph. They do not necessarily have everything that you would want in a graph, but it's sort of a quick version of what each of these graph types look like. And then what I tried to do is sort of articulate for our students, this is sort of intended to be kind of a cheat sheet we can use for ourselves and or our students of how do we actually make Google Sheets make this graph type. Now, starting with bar charts, because it's first in the alphabet and because our students love them, <laughs> this one's an easy one. So 
With a, with a bar chart, we want one column of data that is a category. So in here, it's the planets or the category, and one column, at least one column that is new, a numeric value. So here we're looking at the diameter, right? Because in our bar chart, we are comparing the values, the number values across different categories. Now those categories can be words like here, or they can be numbers, but the key thing is that we are comparing across those categories with a bar chart. So you wanna highlight all of your data once you have it organized like that, insert the chart, select bar chart if Google Sheets doesn't automatically do it for you. And then you can go in and adjust the layout, the titles, the colors. This one's a pretty easy one in Google Sheets. Let's think about another one. Ooh, line charts, another one that our students really enjoy. This again is pretty easy. As long as we've got our two columns, of numeric variables, um, so two values that we wanna look at. So here, one of our numeric values is year, and the other is moose population size. So those are in two separate columns within our sheet. We highlight all of those columns, preferably the top row has the, the name of what it is that we're plotting. We select line chart, you're good to go. You can adjust the layout, the titles, the colors, all the sort of aesthetics of how you want it to look scatter chart. It's pretty similar to that line chart where we've got two columns of numeric values. The key difference being that um, with a line chart, our x-axis is ordinal data. And so 1955 always has to come after 1954 and before 1956, whereas the percent and therefore and the, the data, the observed amount of moose population in 1956 has to come out after the mo observed moose population in 1955. Whereas here, when we think about it, the percent sucrose of fruit, the value at, at this value of eight, that fruit that had 8% sucrose did not necessarily need to be measured before or after any of the fruits that had different percentages of fruits. If that doesn't make sense, drop a comment down below or reach out to me via email. So we've got our two numbers. Again, we just highlight it. We select chart, we select scatter chart or scatter plot, and then we adjust the aesthetics to make it work out the way that we want. Now we're starting to get a little interesting. So our bubble chart or our bubble plots is really similar to a scatter chart, except we can add in even more variables. This is why this comes in later in the K to 12 spectrum, because we're adding the complexity of what our students are looking at. So for this, we want at least three columns of numeric data. Think about it, you want an x-axis numeric, a y-axis numeric, and then the size of the dots also needs to be a numeric value. If you want, you can also add a category, a categorical variable, because that can determine the color of the dots. So you wanna highlight all of those columns of data. You're gonna select bubble chart in the chart type, and then below the chart type, down in the setup tab, below that, you can make sure you've got which variable you want on the x-axis. Here, we're looking at percent sucrose, the y-axis effectiveness of population, the size, this I believe was the flower, the flower length that I set this as. And then I also set up the series is the color as how it was pollinated. Was it pollinated by bats or by other pollinators? And so that setup section below where you choose the graph type is where you're going to make sure Google Sheets is directing that it's directing to the right things in terms of what you want to ask from the data. Once you've got that all set up, then you can customize it and adjust the layouts and colors. So a histogram, right, this is a great thing to help our students get a sense of within one variable, what what does the data look like in the aggregate for that variable before we even start to comparing it to other variables, right? Wrapping our head around what's going on in this variable. So we need a number because a histogram is a frequency that where we bin it across different sets of information. So we need a column of numeric um, of that numeric variable. We highlight just that column because that's all we're looking for in our histogram. We're just looking at one variable at a time. Select histogram, you're off to the races. You can adjust the bin size in terms of what is the range of that no, of those numbers that you're looking for. And then the y-axis will be the, the frequency of how many show up in that section. Now a box plot. 
This is another great way to get a sense of one variable. And we can hack Google Sheets to make this work for us. So Google Sheets has this option called a candlestick chart, which is very similar to the box and whisker plot of a box plot. It takes a little bit of an extra manipulation of the data. So we've got our columns of data in terms of the number, but then we need to sort of create a subset data table from that. And what you want is you want five columns. And so you want the x-axis label, you want the minimum of that numeric, of all those numeric observations in your column, you want the 25% quartile. And so the way that you can do that is you can click into the cell, you can type equals quartile parentheses, and then what you want to do is for that date data range is all the whole number column, whatever that is, comma one. Oh, I see a, an issue coming up in a second. So comma one, and that will spit out the back end algorithm for that equation in Google Sheets will give you the 25% quartile. Now you might see where I'm going here, the 75% quartile, it's the exact same equation, but rather than comma one, sorry, it should be comma three to that gets the 75%. And you know what? I rarely, if ever, remember this. So I usually just Google how do I calculate the quartiles in Google Sheets? And this is how it comes up. And it will tell you one gives you 25%, two gives you 50%, the median, three gives you 75%. So you can always just Google it as, as a reminder as well. And then you also want the maximum value. And then you highlight those data, not the column of numeric variables, but those calculated values, those summary statistics for your numeric variable. And that's what you highlight and make the candlestick chart out of within Google Sheets. Okay, we're rolling along here. Pie charts, another one of our students' favorite. So you want a column of categories, right? Because in a pie chart, we are comparing different categories and how they make up the whole. And then you want a sense of like what it is you're trying to do, right? Remember, this is part of a whole. So are we looking at the percentage of the whole that that takes up? Um, and if you are, make sure it adds up to 100 because you cannot have more than 100% of a whole. So you highlight those data, including the header, pick pie chart, adjust, customize it with the layouts, the, tile, the titles, things like that. And you can actually adjust, you know, in a pie chart sort of right on the line, or you can have a standalone legend, different things like that. The stacked area chart is a great way for students to make comparisons across categories, but also over time or over across a different variable. Yeah. And so what we want for this one is you want a column of your categories here where we've got different types of spending. You want a column, at least one column of numeric. This is the value. Um, and in here we've got also have time. So we have two columns of numeric. Highlight all of those data, all three of the th two, three plus of those columns. Select stacked area chart. It's an easy one that it's just right out of the box in Google Sheets. And then in setup below, remember where we pick the chart type, you want to make sure that it's reading the way you want. And so sometimes, often with this type of chart, you need to click that box to switch the rows and columns. It depends on how you've organized the data and how you want what you're trying to ask of the data um, within the within the chart. And so just make a look at that. If it's if the default from Google Sheets is showing up and you're like, it's not what I want, I don't want it like that try checking that box to switch rows and columns and that often will will switch it up for you okay our stacked area chart is where we're looking at sort of the percent of categories within with the sort of percent of numbers within a category so you want your column of categories because we're looking at a bar chart and we need a numeric we need something that we're looking at that there's different components of so collect all of that um, sort of highlight all of that, I mean, into your chart, and then you can select 100% stacked bar chart. And so in the bar option, there's the typical bar chart where the heights are different. And then this is a different option. It's 100% stacked bar chart, and then you can customize it. Google Sheets more and more has great functionality for their maps. So unlike Excel, the map functions are built in. Now, just like the graphs and plots, there are some limitations, um, but there are two features, this chlor uh, chloropleth, chloropleth map, which is, I get tripped up on every time, which is where we color 
the geographic area by a numeric variable. And then there are also symbol maps where we are overlaying a symbol or a dot on the geographic area that the data are from. But let's do this one first, the choropleth. So here you need a column of your geographic location by text. So state, country, um, those are like, that's what you need in one column. And then you need a numeric variable because it is a numeric variable, or you could do a categorical, but that doesn't really tell you as much um, sort of how you want to color those geographic areas. Highlight those, all of those columns. So you need that geographic location and the observed data that you have. Go to map and geochart as the chart type. Now you can, you're going to have to sort of play around with, do you want to aggregate it? by by regions or by states or not that aggregate click on button if it's not showing up the way you want that's a good one just to try to sort of click on and off and see if it's getting it the way that you want and then this is where we're going to jump over to the customize section in the in the chart editor within google sheets and you want to go to geo and then you want to select the appropriate region so for here to make this map the, ge the region under geo is United States. So that's how I get these data to show up and color each of the states. My data file has states as a column, and then I set that geo region to the United States. And then you can continue to adjust other things. The other kind of map that's easy to make within Google Sheets is a symbol map. So here you do want latitude and longitude. Um, so rather than the geographic location by text, you want the column for latitude and a column for longitude, and then you want a column of your data. So be it numeric, you could also do categorical, but you know, you get less functionality out of that. And so you need at least three columns of data that you are highlighting. You go to map, geochart with markers. So that's how Google Sheets calls their symbol maps, a geochart with markers. Again, click over to the customize section and under geo set your region so here it's set as world and so you just want to make sure that it's actually looking at the region of the world that you are that you have data from that you're interested in looking at and then you can adjust the colors and go forward so those were 11 common graph types that we use in k-12 and how to help our students actually make them in google sheets i just want to remind us that context matters so one chart is you know, mo might be the most effective chart to use for the question that you're asking, but that doesn't mean that all the other charts are completely ineffective. But it does mean that you need to be an active chooser. So you need to actively choose which chart type you are making. You need to actively choose how that chart is set up and organized, aka do not only use the defaults because Google Sheets does not know what you're trying to do with your data. I know you know this, but our students sometimes forget that piece. Okay, a few things about adjusting the Google Sheets default. So the step one is sort of what we just talked about, right? It's like Google Sheets is guessing based on how the data are organized, what kind of chart you might want, but they don't know what you are trying to ask from the data. So you need to make this choice about the chart type. You need to, you might need to adjust the data range depending on how you highlighted the data going in. You need to think about, do I want the aggregate or do I want all the data? You need to think about sort of which series, what are the colors, those different things, because that's based on what you're actually asking from the data. And then step two is how do you want it to look? Again, Google Sheets just makes guesses based on algorithms that they have made really far away from where you created this data set. And so this is where it comes down to, how does it actually look? What am I communicating with my graph? So the style of it, the titles, where what titles you're putting on your graph, the axis position and the colors, the legend, where is it? How is it communicating information? The scale of the axes, how thick they are, are they showing up? The grid lines and the tick marks, all of these components to make the graph more effective at communicating what's going on in those data, that's step two. And that's found under the customize. So when you open that chart editor, you need both pieces. Step one is like the chart type and how to make it. And step two is the customize to make it look like that you want it to look. Now you can spend a ton of time on step two, 
I do not necessarily recommend that unless you are explaining with your data and you really want those data to work, but you should always spend at least some time on step two so that you can get us so that you can better look at what's going on in the data. So a quick tip is if you don't know if there's something you want to change in your chart within Google Sheets and you just don't know like where to find it in the chart editor, just click on whatever aspect or feature of the graph is that you want to change. And it will, if you have the chart editor open, it will automatically redirect you to that part of the chart editor to make those adjustments. So you can try that out. Okay, a few final notes to consider. When we're looking at data, we've talked a lot about this in terms of like what's in our columns. If that seems pretty strange in terms of how to organize your data, I recommend you go back and check out the last data bite where we talked about organizing data to explore it and graph it. We often present our data to our students in a wide organization format, but it is best for graphing if it is in a tidy or long organization format. So even before we get to graphing, you got to kind of step back and think about how are the data organized. Well, sometimes our data needs some processing as well. So Google Sheets has some new functionality built in where they are going to sort of pop up these cleanup suggestions for how to process your data. That's a great sort of reminder refresher, but should not be relied upon. These are some six common things that we often need to do when we're processing our data set. So we've got it organized and then we need to process it so that it's clean so that we can graph it. If you'd like to check this out, feel free to follow this link um, to a whole resource where I talk through how to do all of these and provide a sample data set for walking through and testing these things out with Google Sheets. Whew. Okay, so that was sort of a whirlwind. I encourage you to pause your video, take a moment to kind of reflect back on graphing in Google Sheets. So what are some strategies or processes that you can use to help your learners make data visualizations in Google Sheets, maybe a little bit more strategically or consciously or actively making their choices after watching this data bite video or are there any additional supports that would be helpful for you or your learners to do this better if so drop them in the comments below or reach out to me via email and i'd love to help you out so thanks for listening i hope this was a helpful sort of first pass of how we get Google Sheets to actually work with the data we have for the graph types that we want to use. I hope you all have a wonderful day and enjoy playing with your data. Thanks so much.